Welcome back to the Global Business Report here on Arise News. Uh, now, our metrics is reporting that two years after spending $100 million in Nigeria, Kimberly Clark, which is a producer of you know, sanitary pads, diapers for kids, will shortly announce the impending closure of its Ikorodu production site. Now, in, of course, the facility has been generating, according to what the, the sources, uh, operating below capacity from late 2023 into 2024, uh, also as a result of the uh, business environment uh, here in Nigeria. So we've got to discuss that. We have our, our guest from uh, Afri Invest, uh, Nathaniel Disu. He's a research analyst with Afri Invest Consulting Limited. Nathaniel, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Yeah, good morning you. to you. Yeah, yeah, good to finally morning. meet you in person. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what do you make of this of this news coming from Nigeria? Okay, so the so the Kimberly Clark story it's just more of the current reality that manufacturing and especially consumer goods companies are facing at the moment. So based on that story, the major one of the major challenges that that the company is having is high energy costs. And if you look at the trend for the past like one year, we've seen a lot of consumer goods companies either um, adjusting their business model or totally shutting down their operations in Nigeria. And they all majorly um, talk about two major problems. That's the FX challenges and the high energy cost. So based on the story that, that the Nanometrics reported, so the Kimberly Clark, the, their running cost in terms of energy consumption in a month is running to 100 million every month. So wow. that challenge is not sustainable for them. And interestingly, this will be the second time that the company will be shutting, shutting down in Nigeria. So they started in 2012 and as of 2019, they closed up. Then they came back again in 2021. That was when they invested $100 million. And remember, this is a multinational. So they are bringing in their dollars into the country. And when you look at the effect of the exchange of the of the FX um, exchange rate as at 2021 till now is not the same thing. And by the time they'll be getting their financial reports, they'll be quoting it in dollars also. Right. So that challenge is what we are seeing the company facing at the moment. The the challenges we've talked a lot about the challenges facing manufacturing firms um, here in Nigeria. Um, are those challenges going to abate any time soon? Or are we going to continue to have this yeah, so yeah, erratic power supply, FX, borrowing costs, infrastructure. Will we, if I have you a year from now, two, three years from now on this show, are we still going to be listing these things as challenges in Nigeria? I think at the moment, these are, will I say, continuous challenges that we would be facing. And it's also interesting to note that the diaper, so two of the major diaper companies in the last six months in Nigeria has already folded up. Right. So that's a, like a cause for concern. And the high energy cost, according to the MBS data, diesel, because most of these manufacturing companies, they run on diesel to power their um, generating sets. So diesel has risen for about 68% from last month, from, from April 2023 compared to now. So as I then, it was about 840 something. So now diesel is running to 1,400, 1,500. Wow. So yes, the Dangote refinery um, thing is coming into play, but we'll still be seeing that these issues because it's something that is prevalent. Cost of production in Nigeria is currently high at yeah, the moment. Yeah. And also, there are also challenges of distribution, um, high cost of distribution, because most of our products are distributed by road. So we talk about transportation um, costs, and that's where the um, PMS is high, diesel is currently high. And also, there's also that threat of theft on the road, bad road infrastructure. So these are the current challenges that we would continue to be discussing until all these have been sorted and not to talk more of um, inflation. Well, that, thank you. You've <laughs> preempted my my next question because looking at the most recent inflation data, at least well, month on month, we see deceleration to be fair, um, but year on year, that you know we continue to see. Right? Even with the deceleration in month on month, month on month inflation is still is still pretty high. So, you know, how much pressure is this putting on? I guess on consumer goods firms. So the inflation will be putting a lot of pressure on consumer goods companies because at the moment we are seeing these firms do what we like to use the word um, sagitization of their products. So they are bringing their products into different, different sizes and adult and yet still at those, um, at those different product sizes, we are seeing that consumers are still finding it difficult to even buy those products at the moment. And if you look at the, there's a data from the MBS talking about the household um, contribution to GDP growth. In the last five years, it has been negative. Wow, wow. In 2019, it's 0.1%. 2020, 
1.0%. But in 2021, interestingly, it rose up to about 15%. Okay. And that is most likely due to the uh, palliative measures from the COVID. But right. in 2022, it went down to 3.0%. Now, an estimate that we did on that data is that for 2023, that contribution growth would reduce further to about 4.7% mm. negative. So we are seeing that over the last five years, households are struggling to pay for products that they use on a regular basis. Thank you so much for that uh, insight. You guys are doing you know, great work at Afri Invest. Um, when we look at the NGX and the, I guess the consumer goods um, uh, index, yeah. right? I think yesterday it was down 0.1%. I think yesterday it may be down as well. Um, you know, <laughs> how does that, how does this now filter into those particular companies and the index and its performance uh, so far? So interestingly, the Consumer Goods Index, as at our um, Afrinvest Weekly report that we did as at last week, interestingly, Consumer Goods Index has outperformed the OSHA Index. That's amazing. Yes, well, how is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> so, as at last week, yeah. um, as, at, as at last week, Friday, the NGX was about 30.6% yeah. thereabouts. The um, Consumer Goods Index is about 36%. Really? So, what we are seeing happen in that space is that uh, we are seeing um, investors kind of shifts momentum in terms of their product because as at last year when the whole um subsidy removal and the fx we could see the financial um, sector the banks insurance they had uh, massive growth in their share prices in terms of energy but the manufacturing and the consumer goods were down uh -huh, so now okay. it's more like we are locating funds so that's what we are seeing so the rise in the share price of or the index generally it's not due to uh, the financial performance right, so it's just right. more of investor sentiment changing because you like we all know things would always so you can't a stock uh, an index can't just be going down so people would reshuffle funds even like what we are seeing in the general equities and the fixed income yeah. we are seeing funds being re uh, reshuffled from ngx for to also the fixed income banking is down right. at the moment due to regulatory process so what we are seeing at the moment is that the consumer goods is as outperformed the ngx as at last week but still those performances are not related or to the, to the realities on so the so realities on yeah. ground so it's just yeah. more of changing of investor sentiments at the moment okay again thanks for the insight there so how does the the nigeria you mentioned household contribution yeah. to gdp over the last five years how, how does the how does the average nigerian cope is, I mean, as disposable income is being squeezed are they basically just going to buy less you know how, how does that the how does the individual so come? at this moment what we are seeing is that people are now i don't use the word survival mode yeah, yeah, yeah. it's more of what do they need at the moment what do they need at the moment so like like i talked about earlier on we are seeing sanitization of their products but now people are still choosing what to buy and what not to buy as a matter of my as a as a matter of fact, me personally, it has not since I had study. <laughs> as a matter of fact, we lost. So because yeah. I feel that, do I need to be paid for this? I can look for a substitute. I went to buy plantains, a bunch of... It was 4,000 naira. I to bought just little plantain like this, 1,000. Last time I bought it was 500. Oh, by so eggs. it has gained... A crate of eggs. It's so almost 5,000 So now. these are the realities that we are seeing. Some yeah. persons are even saying that they don't want to eat bread again. Right. Because right. bread is really high at the moment. So that's, that's the current reality that we are seeing. Consumers are having issues to are having challenge paying for these products, yeah. and also we could see a lot of our sausages and the products they reduce the size. It's almost we, no yes, sausage. because they cannot increase the price. Right. People won't buy. Right. People won't buy if they increase the price of their product. So they have to reduce the quantity. And at that moment, people are still struggling to pay for. So that's the current realities that we are seeing at the moment. So satisfaction, shrinkflation, yeah. however you want to call. It. So that abuse. I guess the forecast is you see that continuing yes. going yeah. uh, going forward. Yeah. Wow, look, uh, it's, the, the, the situation is pretty challenging. Look, uh, but as far as an outlook, right, when you look at um, businesses, you know, do they have enough time for things? Is the business environment have enough time for things to stabilize or for the foreseeable future, are, are these challenges going to remain? So at the moment, we don't see these challenges. We actually see them still remain at the moment because yeah. look at the two major issues or two major challenges that businesses are facing inflation and FX challenges, energy price, high energy price. So these are still happening at the moment and we don't see them changing. Just last month, MBS data released the inflation as about 33.7% at the moment. And based on our forecast, we are seeing inflation rise to about 34, 34.3%. So that would also affect the consumer 
prices of goods and goods and services to also affect that. So we are not seeing that moderate or change at the moment. These are still pers um, persistent issues that would be um, impacting the manufacturing and consumer goods um, sector. Nathaniel is a uh, research analyst with Afri Invest Consulting. Great, great insights on the consumer goods sector. Really enjoyed you coming on the show to talk to us. Appreciate yeah. your time. Thank, Thank you so much. much.